Hey guys, it's Demi from Demi's Divine Designs. It's been a bit since I've made another video, but I'm back to doing full-time videos. During the summer, I run an ice cream shop, so it's a little difficult for me to be able to make full-length content. I'm going to be working on that for next season, making like little shorts. I think that'll be a smarter way to go about this. But now that the season is closed, I am back to doing weekly videos on different bags, embroidery. God only knows what else I'm going to come up with. We'll find out when I get there. So we're gonna kick this off by doing a simple, quick, easy project where we're going to make custom pillowcase covers for accent pillows for my couch upstairs. Here's one that I already made. Bam! Look how big it is. <laughs> He's cute. He's adorable. And the fun thing is this panel, this lovely little trick-or-treat ghosty panel, it glows in the dark. So that makes it even more cool. But we are going to be making this for my pillows. I'll run you through how I came up with the measurements, materials, and everything that we need. Let's go ahead and get started going over materials. All right, so starting off with the main focal point of the pillow cushion, I have this 15 by 12 and a half inch panel that I got from my local sewing shop. This actually came with a pack of four panels, and it's supposed to be made for like trick or treat bags, but nope, pillowcase it is. <laughs> So this is going to be my main focal piece. This is going to be the center portion of the pillow. So you're going to need one of these or whatever size kind of fits your pillow. That's where the big variation kind of comes into play with this one is your panel may be different for whatever size pillow you're working with. So panel, you need that. Then you're going to need whatever fabric you're going to be using for your sides of your panel, creating the whole front piece of your pillowcase. This, I'm going to say you're going to need roughly around a third of a yard, maybe even a quarter, depending, again, it all depends on the size pillow that you're using in retrospect with the whatever size panel you're using. So for me, about a quarter of a yard to a third of a yard was what I needed. Now we're gonna be using this beautiful orange fabric with black polka dots that I got from Joann's in their Halloween collection, so perfect timing. Then you're gonna need whatever fabric you were using for your back of your pillow. For me, I'm using this beautiful black fabric with cute little ghosties and pumpkins. Again, it was from Joann's. And this, you're going to need about a half yard to a third of a yard. One of those two measurements will work fine. Again, this all depends on the size pillow you are using. So from these, you're going to need these different cuts. Now, going with my pillow, my pillow is a 22 inch by 22 inch pillow. So that is the measurements that I'm going to be referencing when making both the front and the back panels. So for the front panel with my accent piece being 15 inches and 12 and a half inches as my center piece, I have to cut four different uh, accent side panels to attach onto all four sides of the panel, making this a bigger piece for my front. For the bottoms, I'm going to be doing a five inch panel, five inch strip. I'm not doing the long measurements because I'm just going to cut those to size as I stitch them on because I don't trust my sewing to be 100% correct all of the time to have things be exact until I'm ready to trim everything down. So I'm doing two cuts, five inch. I kind of just want the length of the um, yard the length of the fabric. You don't have to. You can cut it smaller if you need to to save you on fabric. Then for my side panels, I'm going to be doing two five and a half inch cuts. Again, doing the same thing where I'm only just cutting straight down the width. I'm not going to cut this to length because I don't trust my sewing to be 100% correct because this panel was kind of wonky when I cut it out. And this is going to build your front panel. Then for our back, we're gonna bring that fabric out and go over those measurements. For the back panel, you're gonna need two cuts. Since we are doing an envelope backing instead of doing a zipper or kind of just like a stuff in, leave in pillowcase, we're doing this in envelope so we can take the pillow in and out with ease. So we're gonna need two separate cuts for the back panel. And with this panel, we are gonna need it longer than we think because we're gonna do kind of like a French seam type thing to hide all these raw edges throughout the um, construction. So this panel here, 
we have this at 24 inches wide by 19 inches long. Then for our second panel, we also have this, if I can snap it, float, thank you, snap. We also have this at 24 inches long, but this one is only 17 inches uh, tall. That'll help create not too much of an envelope where it's hard to get everything out, but just enough of overlap so it is closed and still looks pretty. So now on to other things that we're gonna need for this project. All right, for this project, we don't really need a lot of extra things. This is very simple and it's great that it doesn't have any hardware. So I am going to be using a Tex 45 weight thread, a black thread from Wizardry Stitchery. I'm gonna be using that both in my top needle and my bobbin. My machine is an industrial, so having this thread in my bobbin does not cause me any issues. That may be different for your type of machine, Always test things out on scrap fabrics before you try to do your full project. Also, clips, healthy stash. Load yourself up, you can never have too many, you can always use them, good to have. Then I suggest having different types of rulers. That is very helpful with trimming things up, making sure everything is aligned, doing markings if we end up needing any. Always good to have a ton of different rulers in your sewing room for different applications. Also, I have two different marking utensils, a water erasable and a chalk, just good to have. Stiletto, stiletto seam ripper combo, always need it. Never a good time when you need this half though, but you know, mistakes happen, good to have. Also, I'm going to be using my iron a decent amount today. And with using my iron to get those seams nice and flat, I like to use this best press. I get it from Joann's. I really like this thing. It's fun, I love it, and I love the fresh linen one. It smells fantastic. Anywho, also, if you would like, for that main front panel, you could add on some fusible stabilizer. Here's SF-101. I don't think I'm gonna be using it today, just mainly because I don't have enough in my stash. I need to go shopping. So, there's all the stuff we need. Let's get into the fun part, which is actually making the pillowcase. All right, so when starting with the front panel of the pillowcase, I like to start with the side pieces. And I ended up taking my one long ways cut and saw that just cutting that strip in half was plenty fabric. So that's what I ended up doing. So we're gonna take one side. Of, this is the five and a half cut. And we're gonna lay that right sides down, like right sides together along one side. And we're gonna clip that in place. Now, like I said, my panel was a little jonky when I was cutting it, so my side's gonna look a little weird. I'm gonna try my best to keep it straight, but you know, fabric will do what fabric does. So, just gonna clip along top and bottom and kind of manipulate my fabric to kind of all line up together and go from there. Perfect, just like that. And I'm gonna repeat that on the other side as well. I'm gonna take my fabric, lay flat, nobody asked to move. I'm gonna take my fabrics right side together, line up the sides and clip into place. All right, perfect. Once that's all set, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along these two clipped edges. At, I like to go a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I like to have a little more beef behind those and stitch those down again, just going right along the clipped edges. Okay, now that we have those two stitched along the sides, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press these seams towards the side panel, creating a nice crisp, like flat seam. So I'm gonna take my, my ironing board made this they're fun i've had this for a while flatten this out and press this out i like to heat up my seams before i press them like before i try to fold them so i'm going to take that i'm going to flip this out and i'm going to take my best pest best press spray say that five times fast no thanks Gonna spray along the seam to help loosen that up a little bit, as well as with heat, it's gonna help flatten this out. 
So I'm going to come at it from the center panel, pushing outward toward the side panel, pushing the seam to go under our side panel. And I'm going to do that all the way up, come in from the center, push out. There are probably other more better, more like efficient ways to do this, but I like this way. So, <laughs> nice press. See how flat that looks. And then we can come at it from the back side as well. Just making sure that the seam is nice and secure, nice and neck net, because we're going to be top stitching this seam down next. And then we're going to repeat that process on the other side, where we're going to flatten, keep the seam up. Just do a quick little swoosh. And spray along the seam, come at it from the center with the iron, pressing out to help push the seam under the side panels. Trying to keep everything nice and flat. See, this one is biting a little bit. There we go. And that best pet best press spray does a really good job of help like crisping that seam up, making it like a little bit on the stiffer side, but still very manageable. Then press it on the side as well. And now at this point, you can go through and trim down the excess side panels. I like to just keep it there for right now until after I do my uh, top stitching, which is what we're going to be doing next. For doing top stitching, what we're going to do is we're going to do this on the side panel. We're going to go about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away from that side that seam that we made, the nice little crease running along the side panel, I pretty much just take my presser foot and ride that right along the seam, which helps keeps a nice straight, even stitch to help hold down that seam behind the side panel. And we're gonna do that on both the left side and the right side. Now that we have both of the sides top stitched, what we're going to do is we are going to trim off this excess from both the bottom and the top of our panel using a long ruler and a rotary cutter. I did forget to mention at the beginning of the video to have a rotary cutter. It's always good to have. So I'm just going to take my ruler, line it up the best that I can along this bottom edge. Since my panel did cut out a little wonky, this is going to be a little more difficult for me. Once I have it where I want, I'm just going to trim off the edge on the one side. I'm going to slide this over to get my other side. If I had a bigger cutting mat that was able to like be recorded where you could see the whole thing, I wouldn't have to move everything. But since I don't, slide it down, line up my ruler, and cut off that extra as well, making sure to get everything as lined up as I can, the best I can with how wonky my panel went. Then we're going to be doing the same on the top. This one, again, I'm just going to line it up with the top part of my panel, try to have everything straight and trim off those extra side pieces, sliding from one side, and then again, I got to shimmy everything over because my cutting mat is too small. But once I get that all good, hopefully I don't have to move my ruler. That would be fantastic, but I'm probably going to get, am I going to get lucky? Am I lucky? Am I lucky? Yes. And then I'm just going to cut straight along there and have that side. Now that we have that all prepped and ready to go, we're going to repeat the same process on the bottom. So grab your two bottom pieces, and yes, for this one we are going to need both pieces because it's a little too close for, oh yeah, that's definitely way too close for comfort. Yeah, we're going to need both of those. So take one of your bottom pieces and we're going to open that and put it right sides together with our bottom piece. So have your panel right sides together on your main piece. Lay that as flat as you would like and get ready to clip. As you're prepping to get this ready to clip, make sure you're lining up the bottoms as much as you can. Grab your stack of clips and we're just gonna go right along the bottom, making sure that both the main panel and our bottom flap are aligned as we clip.
Once we have that done on the bottom, we're going to repeat the process to the top. So flip your project around, grab your second bottom piece, and same thing. We're going to lay that right sides together, having our bottom panel be right sides down and our main panel right sides up. And we are just going to clip along this bottom, well, topish section, making sure that we are lining up the bottom panel with our main panel, just clipping along the sides, making sure everything lines up as well as we can get it. Now that both sides are clipped, we're going to repeat the same process that we did for the two side panels for the top and bottom, where we're going to stitch from clip to clip, going at about a quarter inch seam allowance, securing everything into place. Now that those are all stitched on, I am going to trim some of these pieces up. They're a little too long for my liking, so I'm just going to grab some scissors and just yeet. I'm not going to cut it too close, again, because I like to make sure that when I top stitch I get to hold everything nice and straight so I'm just going to cut off some excess here move that out of my way snippy 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 snip pew okay now <laughs> we are all good we're going to repeat what we did for the other process where we're going to iron these seams flat once we have the iron we're going to heat up our seam before we go to try and press it towards the bottom panel I like to just heat it up I think it makes it easier for me to work with I think I saw that somewhere and I've stuck with it ever since. So once we have that heated up, we are gonna fold this out of the way and take the best pet press spray <laughs> and spray along the seam. And then I'm gonna work from center down, pushing the seam toward my bottom panel and not having it go towards the middle. Here, you're just gonna take it, go slow, fast, create a nice crisp seam, pulling that down. However speed works, you just don't wanna burn every anything, obviously. So. I'm just going to do that. Speedy, speedy, speedy. Once you have that seam flattened how you would like, we're just going to flip this over and kind of just heat it again from the back just to give it that extra support to kind of get it to lay flat. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough. And then we're going to repeat the same process on the top where we're going to heat up the seam before we do anything with it. So give it a little flip, heat it up real quick. Doesn't have to be crazy with this one. Swoop, swoop, steamy, good to go. And then my camera's gonna move. Thanks, thanks buddy, get back over here, thanks. Okay, then we're gonna flip it over, open up the top seam by just doing a little flip. Then we're gonna take the best press spray. Man, that is a tongue twister. Spray and use our iron again, going from center, pushing up. So we're trying to have the seam lay on the top panel instead of in torn the middle panel. You don't like it there don't want it there so just press all of that out of your way this side is giving me a little trouble see how that end didn't go how I wanted it so I'm just gonna reach under fold it with my finger give it a nice little push reheat it it's gonna be fine once we top stitch you're never even gonna notice anyway so then we're just gonna repeat that process once we have that seam nice and flat like how we want it we are going to flip this over and heat it again from the back just to give it that little extra oomphy oomph and be good to go. Once we are pressing on the side, I can see that that corner isn't really laying how I want to, so I'm just gonna keep trying to go over it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once we top stitch, it is gonna hold that seam down in place. It's just gonna bug me right now while I'm looking at it. But anywho, once you are all set with how your seam is looking, we are going to flip this over and we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. We're going to repeat the process that we did on the sides where we are going to take our presser foot and we're going to top stitch the seam to the side panel, not the picture panel. Riding my presser foot right along that seam, stitching it right on, making sure that the seam is going toward the side panels, not toward the center. And it should be pretty good. So let's head that over there now. All right, perfect. Now that we have those two sides top stitched down, we're gonna trim down that excess. So I'm gonna take my cute little cutting net and then we're just gonna trim down the excess doing the same that we did on the other side where we're just gonna line up the roller, keeping everything straight-ish. And this side is a little bit more, um, you have more of a bow 
just due to, again, how wonky my panel cut out. If your panel cut out with perfectly straight edges, this should not be a problem for you. I'm just going to cut off all the way down. I'm gonna slide this up and over. And that did move my ruler, so I'm going to have to like lay it back out again. Again, that would not be an issue on a bigger rule, a uh, bigger cutting mat, or if your panel cut out straight like it, you know, should. So, all set. Whoop pow. Just like that. And then we're going to repeat to the other side as well. Flippity do da, flippity day. All right, once we have that cut, trimmed down, and ready to go, your front panel is technically done. What you can do here at this point, you could flip this over. You can have this flipped over and you can take some SF 101 and you can cover up these seams to help prevent fraying down the f in the future. I don't think that's going to be a huge issue with this one because they're just going to be throw pillows, like little accent pillows, and I don't see these getting washed too frequently for it to be an issue. So I think it's fine, and I also don't have any extra SF-101, so we're just going to let this rock how it is. Now we're going to work on the back panel. Now that we have our two back panel pieces, they are both cut at 24 inches wide, with the longer of the two being 19 inches wide, and the shorter of the two being 17 inches wide. I like to have at least a two inch difference between the two back panels, even though we're trying to create like an overlap. I don't want them to be exactly the same because then the overlap is going to be too big and we have to like fight to get the pillow inside the uh, pillowcase, which nobody wants to do that. That's too much work. So that's why I have my two inch difference between the top and the bottom panel. We're going to work with the longer of the two. It doesn't matter which one. I just like to start with this one because it was already on my table. So we are just going to flip this and have our right side on our table and we're going to be making our markings on the back. We're going to be making two separate markings, one at a three quarter inch and one at two inches from that three quarter inch. So grab your long ruler and a marking tool and we're going to take our ruler measuring three quarter of an inch from the raw edge, which with the ruler I have, it's a very easy thing to find. And once you find that, we're just going to take our marker and just yeet that. I like to go over it a few times just because my marker sometimes doesn't show up enough. I need to get a new one of these. But anywho, once you have the mark how you'd like it, you are all set on that first one. Now from here, you have two ways of measuring this by either taking your two inch mark and lining it up with your three quarter inch mark you just made or just measuring two and three quarter inches from the raw edge and same thing, just marking straight across the entire thing, just so we have our reference points so we can fold everything over. Once we have all of our lines marked, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our ironing board and we're gonna do our folds. The first one, we're gonna take the raw edge and fold that up to the three quarter inch line. So grab your ironing mat, iron and take your raw edge, fold that up to fold right on the three quarter inch mark. We're kind of just pressing right on that line. We don't want it to be too far away from the line. We want the fold to be right on that three quarter inch line. And the iron just helps hold that crease, hold everything down to keep everything nice and straight to help just keep it in place as we're moving everything around and making the other folds that we have to make. Once we have the one side flat, we're going to continue that onto the other side, making sure that that three quarter inch mark that we drew is right in where we're folding that fabric. So we're just folding it right on that line and ironing it to keep it in place. And then once we are set, what we're going to do is we're going to take our folded edge and we are going to bring that up to meet our two inch line that we made as, as well. So we're just going to set this how we need to grab the folded edge and we're going to bring that up to meet the two inch ironing that into place creating the crease hiding our raw edge of our fabric inside this little fold sandwich thing that we're making here.
Now, just because I have an obsession, I'm also going to take my best press and I'm going to spray this seam and iron that down. This is going to create like some stiffness to the seam, which is going to help keep everything straight when I bring everything over to the machine to top stitch. So I'm just going to run my iron over this just to get the best press to set into the seam and hold everything in place. And then once I am set with how that looks, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to top stitch on both edges of this fold. We're going to go right along the top edge, kind of just riding our presser foot along that, just holding that into place, creating like that nice finished edge look. And then we are also going to top stitch along the inside edge. This is going to hold everything in and it's going to seal our raw edges inside. Okay, perfect. Once we have that all done, we should have a stitch right along this top edge and a stitch right along this fold holding this into place. If you had one of those cute little sew-in labels, you could always stick one of those in here and I think that would be like a really cute like just little accent for this. Adorable. I don't have any, but that would be awesome right here. All right, so for the second panel, we're going to repeat the same process. So get this one out of the way. And again, taking this panel, we're going to measure from this edge two times. We're going to measure from this top edge three quarters of an inch on my ruler. It is really easy for me to do. Drawing a line going all the way across. And then from that line, we're going to measure two inches. So going full two and three quarters of an inch from the raw edge. But from our line, we're just going to go two inches over. Bam, bam. Like so. Then we're going to take our iron, folding right along that three-quarter inch fold. I'm going to start over on this edge. Take that and fold that right on that three quarter inch mark, giving that a press, bringing that all the way down, making sure we're pressing right along that three quarter inch mark. Then once that's set, we're going to fold, take our three quarter inch fold and bring that right up to our two inch mark and we're going to press this as well letting our fold go a tiny whiny 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 bit over the mark. Using my best press because I always need an excuse to use it. Just crisp up that fold. Keep it nice and tight. <laughs> then once that is set, we're going to repeat what we did for the other side for this one. We're going to top stitch right along this bottom fold. And then we are going to top stitch right along this top fold, securing everything down, sealing that raw edge in this fold. All right, perfect. Now that we have both the top and the bottom piece of the back panel stitched down with the seams hidden inside this fold, what we're going to do is lay out the panel and clip into place so it's the correct measurement that it should be, which kind of creates our envelope fold. So, Grabbing your second panel. Now this might be a little difficult for me to show on camera because I can't get like the full thing. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a ruler and we're gonna measure out to 24 inches. This is how big our panel is supposed to be towards the end. So we're gonna have to pull the top panel down to make it meet that measurement while keeping the bottom panel in place. Line that up. See, I pulled that down a little too much. That is perfect. So now from edge 
all the way up here to edge. This measures 24 inches. And we're gonna clip in place where the two sides overlap. Grab those clippies and clip into place. This side and on that side. All right, once we have those clipped, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're just gonna stitch from clip to clip, clip to clip, securing the two panels together. All right, perfect. Now that we have that done, these two panels are attached. And I did that at a quarter inch seam allowance. I don't remember if I mentioned that before. So technically we are done assembling both panels. Now we just get to put them together. So flip your back panel right side up, grab your front panel, and we're gonna lay the front panel right side down. Now, when doing this, you are going to see that there is quite a bit of difference <laughs> between the panels, which that's fine. For the look I'm looking for, that goes perfect. If you wanna change that, make it different, you're just gonna adjust your measurements for your side pieces. So I'm gonna start by doing the sides. I'm going to mark my centers, which I'm just gonna fold them in half, fold in half, like so, and I'm just gonna do a tiny little cut in that corner, and I mean like very, very tiny, just like a little, what pow? Didn't even see where that went. That's how tiny. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my side panel, I mean my back panel. Fold in half, tiny, tiny, little cut. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my back panel, leave that right side up, take my front panel right side down, line up those notches like here and then i'm going to clip into place along the side one more and i'm actually going to do the same on the other side as well since this is already like clipped it's going to be a little I'm not going to be able to like move it but that's fine I'm just going to line this up like so, little snip. that was too tiny, snip. same here, little snip. and line this up. You're gonna have to like pull it to get this one to line up, but it is fine. And clip. All right, perfect. And then once we have those two set, we're gonna head to the sewing machine and we're just gonna stitch along those clipped edges at, I like to go a half of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we have those two sides done, we're gonna kind of repeat the same process for the bottom. So we're, I'm gonna turn this just so then you guys can actually see everything that I'm doing. I'm gonna take my center, I'm gonna take my bottom, uh, my front panel technically, line up, seam, seam, kind of like, just set those into each other. Pull this, mark my center. Do a little. Yeet. Same on this side for the bottom. Line that seam up. Seam, seam. Pull that center. Yeet. Then line up those two center marks. And clip into place. And then I'm gonna clip all the way across this bottom into place. And it is gonna push this side out slightly. That's okay, that's fine, it's okay. 
See how like this edge kind of folds at that seam? That's okay. That's what we're going to do. It's a cute look because it's going to roll a little bit of the, ed the back fabric to the front and looks really cute when it's done. So like that. Same on this side. I like to just stick my finger in and give it a tiny little bit of a tug. Line that up. And clip. And then line the bottom with the top panel, clipping along that, that bottom line. And then that's going to look like that with everything lined up. And we're going to do the same on the top side. So swoopy swoop. Take these two, seam to seam, kind of line that up. Pull the top out. Little mark there. Reline that seam up to do the bottom. Then pull those two center seams together. And clip in place. All right. So once you have that clipped how you like, we're going to head over to the sewing machine. And again, we're going to stitch along those two clipped edges at a quarter, uh, half inch seam allowance. Okay, perfect. And we are technically done with the pillowcase. I like to just do one last thing to just give it a little more oomph, which we're going to turn this guy right side out through our, our envelope pop. I like to use my finger to just push that corner out. Same down on the bottom. Use my finger. Push. That corner is what these lovely nails are good for. Same on this side. Nice little push. Pull any weird thread that's hanging. What is that doing there? There we go. And same on the bottom corner. Nice little push. Okay. And then from here, I like to just flatten everything out. You can do this with the iron if you would like. I did already unplug mine, so it's just going to just gonna rock. Just give that a nice little roll, pressing that out. Actually, I think I'm going to have to plug my iron back in because I need this nice and crisp. So, uno momento. All right, now that my iron is heated back up, our goal is to try to get these seams up at the top as flat as possible and rounding these two seams over an equal amount so you see just a little bit of that black ghosty fabric peeking through. So I'm going to start with the bottom and the top and then I'll do the sides. I'm going to take my this press. Pum, 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 pum. Get that bottom a little wet. Kind of roll that seam a little bit with your fingers. I like to start at the center and work my way out. Nice little roll. See how like that all disappeared and we have about, I'm gonna say quarter of an inch popping out over here. All right, and then I'm just gonna press here. Rolling this side as I go. Again, having about a quarter of an inch sticking out over here.
and that's going to get that seam down there nice and flat. We're going to repeat that same process on the top side. Beep, beep, beepity beep. Get that on here. Spray. Start at the center. Roll. Then once you're comfortable with how that's starting to look, grab the iron, start at the one side, work your way towards the other. Rolling as needed. You don't really want a lot of that bottom pad, uh, that back fabric poking out of the top or bottom seams, but we want it coming out of the sides. <laughs> Like that. Keeping about a quarter inch of that side fabric peeking out. Now let's work on one of these sides. Let's go this one. Lamp, lamp. We're kind of going to tug at this and roll slightly towards the center and then give it kind of like a roll back. Pulling any little like fray guy that wants to chill out. Thanks, buddy. Right where the two sides overlap is going to be your hardest area to get this to lay because you have the fabrics wanting to pull in different directions. That's where best press comes in handy. So once you get that kind of rolled out to where you have about a quarter of an inch all the way down, Spray, pium, 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 pium. and then press. In this one, I like to start from the side and work my way center, just so things roll correctly. See that one? I didn't like how much of that pulled out. There we go. And then down here. And then that just creates like a nice little accent to make it look cute. I do have to fix how that pulled that corner. Nice little roll. There we go. Now it's all Gucci goo. Like that. So we have that nice little trim along the side and we're going to repeat that on the other side. Laying it as flat as you can with those envelopes trying to jut out. If you can roll that seam towards the back, that should make this easier. Magic word there being should. Is it going to? Who knows? But rolling it towards the back panel instead of having it going towards your front panel will help with this ironing process a little bit more. So. I like to just kind of work it with my fingers, rolling it around till I feel it lay the way I want it to. Like that. And then tug out that front panel. And then again, once you get that where you are happy with that little reveal, and press. And then for this, I do this side, I like to start in the center because now it's got a little more tug on it from us doing the other side. Smoosh. And again, rolling it as you're ironing, just to make sure that everything stays how you want it. I guess sometimes the iron does like to move things. Nice little 
press. Fix your sides if you need to. And perfect. Once you are then happy with how the ironing looks, we're going to put all of that away because now we are officially done with the iron and the ironing board. Then once you are all set and ready to go, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch a half inch along the bottom and we are just going to ride that seam along the sides, stitching on the front panel, not the sides, not the back panel here, the front panel creating a French seam hiding our raw edges on both the bottom and the sides, the top, bottom, and sides. Let's go do that. All right, and our pillowcase is officially done. This is a really cute way to use these panels. I have a ton of these. I don't know why I have so many, <laughs> but this is a cute way to have holiday theme ones and stuff go into your decor very easy. So let's do the fun part of sticking it in our pillow. Let me grab the amp. Pillow, pillowcase. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this into the envelopes. I don't know if there's like an easy way to do it. I just kind of just stick it, jam it in there. So jam away. All right. and. It is in, good to go. I love how this little accent on the side pops out and kind of just brings the back over, makes everything look really cute. And us doing this French seam-ish around the sides is a perfect way to hide all of the raw edges, making it so you can still put this in the washer. It's gonna look good. So we're gonna take a look at this on the couch. You can see the other two that I've made and thank you guys so much for clicking and watching. If you guys have any questions or anything you would like to see, please let me know. I know it's been a while, but I'm really excited to get back into making videos all the time, making bags, organizing everything. Just that I have a list of projects that I cannot wait to try. I am so excited to see you guys again, talk to you guys again, see how everything's going on. And let's take a look at these on the couch and I will see you guys next time.